a global pandemic. We must act as if we have been invaded by an enemy, because in truth, we really have been. Civil unrest. We're fed up, we're fed up. We're here to let y'all know we're not standing for it, it's not going no more. Natural disasters. A contentious election. Go Vice to President Biden. Five states. There's more than enough anger and heartache filling the headlines. But what if we took a closer look? I have no problem taking a knee for everybody. To find bright spots. So it's grown really from this just idea of what can I do as one person to a volunteer movement across the country. Overcoming the darkness. God bless you for the love you have for your country. All around us. It's the spirit of Dayton, Ohio. Um, I think that um, people love our community. Dayton 24 seven now teaming up with our sister stations across the state. I think it's wonderful that uh, people do that for you know people in Ohio because they're in need. To bring you news to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. Give you a hug. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's been said that sometimes a little comfort food can go a long way. Good evening, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Adam Errol. And I'm Megan O'Rourke. While many are sitting down for turkey together, several others are enjoying one of the oldest comfort foods, lasagna. And it's all thanks to a new movement now making a mark here in the Miami Valley. Ground beef, tomato sauce, noodles. It's a simple start to one of the oldest recipes. That simple start leading to a simple act of kindness. My daughter and I love to cook and we just started making extra meals and posting them to Facebook groups. That simple act now spreading across the country during a time when COVID-19 is continuing to fill our news feeds. It's called lasagna love and it's more than just a free meal. It's an incredibly challenging time. I, I think at the core, lasagna love is about scaling kindness, about spreading love and kindness. From one woman and one kitchen to now more than 3,000 volunteer chefs in 42 different cities, including Dayton. Chefs like Lisa Haidt, who saw Rhiannon's story on TV one day. Right away, I jumped on my computer and, um, and signed up to volunteer. Lisa and others now delivering more than 1,000 meals each week. And I think it's just bringing this, you know, to, bringing to our um, forefront how important it is to be kind to others. And I think that's contagious. Volunteers buy the ingredients, make the meals, and then drop them off to families in need. Those who have lost a loved one to COVID-19, lost a job, or are struggling, juggling work from home and virtual learning, there's no special criteria to meet. For us, struggling is, that's whatever you think it is for you. The program now expanding to allow you to nominate someone you love. Sometimes people say, I just want to cry. You know, it, it's made me so happy. It's the nicest thing anyone's done for me in a long time. It proves that even when socially distant, there's people out there that want to help and, and don't expect anything in return. There is purpose in participating in something positive. And I'm going to look back and say, this is what I did when our country was going through this crisis. I helped people. Now, if you need a meal or want to volunteer, we've put a link to the Lasagna Love website on Dayton247now.com. Just click on news links under the news tab. A look now at the Troy traffic circle tonight. Businesses there preparing for Black Friday during a pandemic. Many shoppers scared to venture out. Many small businesses now worried about how to keep afloat. And that's where Jenny Bolton comes in. After just recovering from COVID-19 herself, she wants to give back to her community. She will go out, she'll do your shopping for you, and then deliver it to your door. It's just one catch. It has to be a local business in Troy or Tip City. It's an ex-store owner say. We'll make a difference this holiday season. I just want to help anybody who is fearful of going out right now, where I am um, blessed to have my help. They've supported me, so I feel like I would love to give back to them just by showing my thanks. The small stores are your community. They're your friends. They're your family. And we have kids to feed, families to take care of. We have our lives that we have to support. Now, the best place to place an order is through Facebook. We put the contact information on Dayton247now.com. Just search Jenny, J-E-N-N-I, Bolton. And coming up during our extended special at 11, you'll hear more from the store owners about what this unique show of support means to them. And who could forget about the Dayton Flyers and the magical season they had that was unfortunately cut short by the pandemic. The Flyers finished the season with a 29-2 record. They were just one of the favorites to make a long run in the NCAA tournament. UD led by Obi Toppin, who was named the Naismith College Basketball Player of the Year. 
Just last week, he was drafted number eight overall to the New York Knicks. I'm from New York. That's why it's important. <laughs> me, me, me repping my city is it's amazing. A lot of people pray to be in this position, and, and I'm not going to take it for granted. I promise you that. Now the Flyers open the new season on December 5th against SMU and conference play on December 30th against LaSalle at UD Arena. And we spoke with Jeremy Ganger following UD season. You'll remember he jumped into action rushing people inside Ned Pepper's bar during the Oregon District mass shooting. His action is credited with saving hundreds of lives. Ganger still has a shrapnel from that night embedded in his leg. He told us about the importance of the community rallying around this team, especially after 2019. For the Flyers succeed, our whole community is really excited about it. All the tragedy we've been through with the tornadoes, the mass shooting we had in August. We are leaning on UD to make our happy statement for the year. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have something to rally around and be cheer about. It. Ganger was honored at a UD game back in March. And a memorial now hangs outside of Ned Peppers in honor of the nine who were killed and the dozens that were injured that day. On the one-year anniversary, a woman made it her mission to pay tribute to the victims and help provide some healing for the entire community. Dayton 24-7 Now's Danielle Malagari shows us she's using her heart to show her support. I start with these little bitty tiny beads. 300,000 of them. And they just slide right in. One bead at a time, Dayton Diamond portrait artist Shirley James is turning her passion into compassion. Most important part is getting the right picture. After hearing about the Oregon District mass shooting, James knew she wanted to do something. I started these 10 months ago. Her hard work is now complete. A diamond portrait of all the nine victims of the Oregon District mass shooting. It's the only thing I could think of to do. James tells me this tragedy left her heart broken. A few of her co-workers knew some of the victims personally. It really affected everybody I worked with. As dozens impacted by the tragedy stopped by the Oregon District to remember the victims who died, James is meeting some of their family members for the first time, personally giving them their loved one's picture. I'll give you a hug. Thank you. You're welcome. Dion Green lost his father, Derek Fudge, in the shooting. He says these photos not only serve as memories, but as a sign of togetherness. There's so many great people in this community that's here that's supporting all of us and, and keeping us our heads up. And I thank people like her. Green says this photo will forever be close to his heart. The words James has waited almost a year to hear. Well over 600 hours, it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. That was Danielle Malagari reporting tonight. The portraits were displayed back on August 4th to mark the one year. Shirley then delivered them to the victim's families to have free of charge. I came out of the bathtub and everybody was screaming, yelling. Miami Valley continuing to recover after last year's devastating Memorial Day tornadoes. A look at how far we've come as a community and why so many are determined to rebuild better than ever. And a UD student seeing a need, the unique brace he designed and why it means so much to one girl with cerebral palsy. Plus, incredible works of art that the maker will never see. Why losing his sight hasn't stopped him from making the world more beautiful. Memorial Day 2019, 15 tornadoes ripped through the Miami Valley, the strongest in EF4 with winds of 170 miles per hour hitting Trotwood. Old North Dayton, Harrison Township and Beaver Creek and more all affected. Dayton 24 seven Skyview giving you a look at the devastation then. In Harrison Township, 1000 buildings were damaged and the rebuilding is still ongoing. Despite the time it's taking, many Harrison Township residents are determined to stand strong after the storm. Through the devastation, those who call Harrison Township home are showing their grit and resilience as they work to rebuild their homes, neighborhoods, and community together. We're not going anywhere, um, and our ability and willingness to help and support the residents uh, will remain. The day after the tornadoes, read the rebuilding started, and so did the Dayton Foundation's Greater Dayton Relief Fund. So far, 3,700 people have donated to it, raising more than $2.2 million. The first part of that going to the initial response, the next part going toward rebuilding. For folks like Les Vaughn, giving up and moving on is not an option. Because it's home, I guess. I raised my kids here. I wish them back, it would be fine. And coming up tonight at 11, we'll hear from the people and groups dedicated to this recovery, no matter how long it takes. Miami Valley families have been hit hard by the pandemic. If it weren't for a local pantry, in fact, many wouldn't have a meal tonight. 
Good to have a great one. Happy holidays. Hundreds turning out for With God's Grace's turkey giveaway at the Kroger on Needmore Road last week. The pantry had 1,000 birds. The gesture especially meaningful in the midst of the pandemic. I know friends that have lost people, you know, and uh, I just thank God that my people still are alive and still living. You know, even though we ain't going to be able to gather, but they are right here in my heart. The turkeys came from the Dayton Food Bank and a private donor. And if you need help, Dayton 24-7 Now has compiled a list of food banks in our area. Just head to Dayton247Now.com and click the alert at the top of the homepage. He said he's becoming famous with all the cards and everything. <laughs> the Miami Valley on a mission to make a World War II veteran's birthday special. How social media helped make it all possible. Then a college project turned a life-changing medical device, how it works and the impact it's having. Remember being assigned a class project in college? You put all your effort in to get the grade, then you typically move on. But that is not the case for a UD student. Instead, he stuck with it, creating Freedom Brace. And in the process, he changed the life of a local teen and others around the country. At Madison High School, there are many students, but you'd be hard-pressed to find one with a sense of humor. What did the fish say when he hit a wall? Quite like Leanna Bryant. Damn. She's your typical teen who loves to bowl, be outdoors, and laugh, especially at her mother's expense. She loves her teacher. <laughs> loves her teacher. Yeah. She's more fun than me. Bryant has a form of cerebral palsy, the product of a birth injury. We're super lucky that the brain injury only affected um, that motor region, not her cognitive areas. So she's pretty darn smart. We just have a body that doesn't cooperate. One of the challenges is finding equipment that works well. Don't tighten your legs up, you stinker. <laughs> One of those pieces of equipment, a brace to keep Bryant's legs from crossing at night. Nothing worked, and if left unchecked, can be devastating. And it's very uncomfortable, and it can cause hips to dislocate, which, of course, then requires massive surgery, and we ain't going there. Desperate for ideas, her mom found hope at the University of Dayton. She asked some freshman inventors to come up with something better. One of them was Spencer Janning. It's not what I was expecting to you know, get into at the University of Dayton. Janning was looking more at aerospace engineering, not creating a medical device. But there was something about Bryant's story that clicked. So the first thought was I wanted the individual to be able to move their legs up and down, which is allowed in like this movement. And at the same time, I wanted them also to be able to move their legs apart and back together or add and add abduct the legs. So like this. And he holds up this weird little device, and, and I see him moving it. She loved it from right then and slept with it that night and has worn it ever since. After I saw the impression that the device had on Liana and how, how much it improved her quality of life, it really inspired me to continue to work on it after the class ended. Janning kept improving the design, spending hours inside this lab at UD, eventually earning a patent for the idea then manufacturing and selling them across the country, even adding a little flair to them too. Do you like that it's got zebra print on it? Yeah! A grateful family to a student who never stopped working. Now, a big help for Janning and Creative Free Embrace has been a program inside of UD called Leonardo Enterprises. It's a new business incubator and investment program for all students and staff who want to start their own technology-based business. This is what makes people nervous when they see me using the table saw. He's blind, but that's not stopping him from making unique works of art, the inspiring story behind these beautiful clocks. Then a World War II vet celebrating 103 years, the way the Miami Valley is celebrating him and the impact it's had on his family. You're watching Dayton 24-7 Now News. A plea on the Dayton 24-7 Now Facebook page led to a massive response. A local World War II veteran, Simon Rose, turned 103 years old back in September, and the Post asked people to send him a birthday card. His family didn't know what to expect, and what they got was an incredible outpouring of love and support. Uh, 
say does the star spangle banner yet It's not every day the national anthem is sung on your driveway. And the home of the brave. But this is no ordinary day, and the man who lives here hasn't lived an ordinary life. World War II veteran Simon Rose is turning 103 years old. These students heard about it through a post on Facebook, a post asking for birthday cards. When all was said and done, 150 or so were sent. I hope you have a wonderful birthday filled with lots of fun and the love of all your family and friends. Rose's daughter Tammy reads a few of them to him. God bless you for the love you have for your country. Rose's wife of 67 years, Geneva, says it means the world to their family. He said he's becoming famous with all the cards and everything. <laughs> well, it is Simon Rose. Rose's military service dates back 85 years. My deepest gratitude for your service to your country. Al Bailey of Honor Flight Dayton explains. He went in at a very early age, very young age, because he had a hard family uh, life going up and things. And so the service was his way out once, once uh, World War II broke out. Inside of his home, medals, recognition, and the places he served in while in the Army, including Iwo Jima. It, it's just amazing the sacrifices and the service that he has done for our country. Celebrating you today and every day. Happy birthday. Thank you for your service. A special birthday and a deep gratitude. Celebrating a life of service. Rose went on Honor Flight Dayton four years ago, says he continues to treasure that trip. If you'd like to learn more about Honor Flight and how you can nominate a veteran to go on it, you can go to Dayton247now.com and click on news links. Now to the story of an Ohio man who turned a near tragedy into something extraordinary. Jim Morgan has been a woodworker all of his life and nearly died after he was hit by a car six years ago while crossing the street. Morgan is now blind, but doesn't let that disability define him. Known as the blind clockmaker, he envisions the clock in his mind and then uses his hands to guide him during creation. I tell people there's two things you can say about my clocks. One is there'll be one of a kind because I can't copy. And the second one is the person that built it will never see it. Incredible. Morgan teaches woodworking to other blind people and, of course, sells his clocks, mostly so he can afford the supplies to build more pieces of art. You can catch more of Jim's story tonight at 11. A unique show for families stuck at home. The idea behind this traveling marching band and the plans for its future next. You're watching Dayton 24-7 Now News. inside getting a peppy surprise. It's a story that went viral on the Dayton 24 seven now page. The Wayne High School marching band spent five weeks pumping up the spirit in its local communities. Every weekend, the wayfaring warriors traveled throughout neighborhoods, spreading positivity across the Miami Valley. With everything that's going on, I know everything can be tough for some people and stuff like that. So we wanted to do something special to try to boost the community. I think it's a great idea. I love that we're still able to do little things for our communities, even with COVID going on. I think it's a great idea, and I love that we're, you know, boosting the spirits of our communities and still able to do something. Organizers say the event was so much fun, in fact, that they may pick it back up and continue it after the pandemic is over. In Dayton 24 7 Now News, remaining committed to spreading good news, and you can help us out. It's real easy to submit those pictures and videos and the stories behind them. Just download the free Dayton 24 7 Now app, click on Explore, then press Chime In, and we'll be sure to use your pictures and video on air and online. And if you need more good news, we have an extended special coming up right here on ABC 22. You can tune in at 11. We'll also be streaming on the Dayton 24 7 Now Facebook page.